Today I'm going to show you how to use the new Sizzix Biggs Petite Purse. To cut the actual purse, we're going to be using the new Stampin' Up! Biggs Petite Purse die and a half of a sheet of cardstock. So we're going to put the cardstock right on top of the die with the blades up. So you're going to put that on top of your die. Then you're going to put the die on top of a cutting plate and you're going to cover it with your crease pad. And the crease pad is pliable. So you put that right on top and that's going to give you nice creases without actually cutting your cardstock. And then you're going to run this whole thing through the big shot. When it comes out, you'll have your purse and then this little piece, which is going to be your hand. This month, the topic of conversation in our Stampin' Success magazine was acrylic distress, and it was made with acrylic paint, which is far too messy for some people, including me. So I'm going to show you how to do it using a classic ink pad. And so we're going to use soft suede, and we're going to use one of our sponges. So I've just cut a Stampin' Sponge into four, and then I used one of our punches to make a little uh, punch out. I wrote the name on it and stapled it on so that I know which which sponge is which. So I'm just going to transfer this color on here and you can do that until you're comfortable with the color. And you can swirl it or stamp it or however you want to get color on here. But you want to get pretty good coverage. Once you have uniform coverage on your purse piece, you're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the handle. But be careful with this handle because it's a little harder to transfer it without tearing the paper. So you want to be careful. I'd like you to turn it over and do the back side as well because you'll see a portion of that when you look at the purse. So once you have them both covered, we're then going to get to get this nice design on there. We're going to put it through our Big Shot using the finial press embossing folder. Now when you put it in here, you're going to have to do it two times because it's too big the way it is. And you want to make sure that you are impressing the design up so that it punches out. So I'm gonna. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna line it up with the seam here to, at the top of my embossing folder. So I'll put that in there and sandwich it in. Make a sandwich with my cutting plates, and then I'm gonna use my multi-purpose platform open completely. I, you can also do it on tab one, but I like to do my impressions folders on tab one. And make certain that it's not sticking out the side of your sandwich because then it's going to damage the paper. So you're going to take this whole sandwich and run it right through the big shot. Once you do that, it's going to give you the first half and then you're going to turn it around and again you're going to match up your seam and you're going to close it, put it back in and run it through again. You're then going to take the handle and do the same thing, run that through the big shot. Okay, so now that that's done, you're going to take your sanding block and you're very gently going to just scrape across the surface because what I want you to do is just remove the, the color from the parts that are sticking up. I'm sanding, but I'm not pushing down. So you're going to go ahead and do the whole piece. Some pieces are a little more stubborn than others, so sand it in one direction and then turn your paper and sand it in another. And it's okay if it's not uniform. It's part of the beauty of the technique. So you're going to clean off all that dust that you've created now. You're going to do the same thing to the handle. Remove remove the color from those protrusions. And then you're going to take the dust off both of them because it does make a bit of a mess. And that's one of the reasons that I love our grid paper because you could just take the grid paper and fold it up and get a new piece. So now that we have a clean surface to work with, I'm going to put that back on my paper and I'm going to get the Baja Breeze Classic Ink Pad and my Baja Breeze sponge and I'm just going to ink that up and lightly, again, I'm swiping, I'm not pressing. I'm just going to swipe the color across those areas where we removed the color from the protrusions. So that embossed section that sticks up is now going to have this blue tint to it. Once you've done both the handle and the purse, you're going to then start to assemble it. So I want to fold it on those score lines and I'm going to just gently press down with my bone folder just to make that score a little sharper. Once you have everything scored, you're then going to take some sticky strip and you're going to put it on 
the tiny tab on this side and the tiny tab on this side. Now if you notice, the sticky strip is wider than the tab. So I'm just going to take one of my craft and rubber scissors and I'm just going to trim that edge a little bit so that I don't have any sticky strips sticking over the edge. Once I've trimmed it, I'm going to press it down with my bone folder because you've saturated this paper with ink so it's not really going to want to stick. I'm going to use my paper piercer to lift the edge and peel both of these off. Once you've removed them, you're going to very carefully fold this in and match it up to the side, the back side of this. And the way I do that is I hold this corner down so that the paper doesn't catch until I let go. So I have time to line up my sides. So once that's where I want it to be, I'm going to go on the inside and press to give that nice finished look. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this edge. I'm going to hold it down, line up the corners, and then press. Okay. The last thing we're going to do is we are going to put the um, handle on. This actually would have been easier if I had done the handle before I assembled it. So you guys should do that. So I'm going to press down with my paper piercer here and here. And again, you definitely want to do this on your mat so that you're not making a hole in your finger. And then I'm going to make a hole in the actual handle. And I'm going to take two of our mini brads and I'm just going to put those right through. And I'm going to stick that in here and then I'll open that brad up and it's going to hold the handle in place. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Once you're through, you can take the little notch and put it in the little slice that they've provided for you to create your purse. You could fill this with, uh, think up to five little chocolate nuggets. And now to just finish this off, I'm gonna take a piece of Baja Breeze cardstock and my one inch circle punch. I'm gonna punch out a circle. And then I'm gonna take a scissor and I'm just gonna spiral cut this. Once I have this spiral cut out, I'm just going to start at the center and I'm going to just curl it up and then wrap it around itself. And I'm not using any glue at the moment. I'll do that at the end. So I'm just going to just keep wrapping it. And there's different people hold it differently. I find if I squash it between two fingers, it makes it easier. It doesn't unravel as I'm doing it. So you're just going to basically curl that up until you've used your whole entire circle and then it, it's like a little flower. So I want to push that inside down a little bit because I don't want it sticking up. I want it a little, dip, a little indentation. Once I have that done, I'm going to take mini glue dots and I'm just going to push that whole flower into the glue dot to hold it together. Okay, and I'm squeezing the flower closed and then I'm lifting it. So I have one glue dot and I'm going to put three different glue dots on there because I want to make sure that this doesn't unravel. Okay, and then again, I'm sort of pushing down in the center and there's this little tiny edge here. So what you can do with that is you can take a mini glue dot and you can kind of roll it up a little bit so that it's small and then just put it underneath there and then stick that down. Or if you're a glue person, you could certainly put a little dot of glue. So once that's done, I'm gonna take one of our pearls and I'm just gonna place it right in the center of the flower. And then it's still on the little mini glue dots that are now stuck to my finger. And I'm gonna just stick that right on the front of this paper. So I'm gonna open it up and just give it a good squeeze to make sure that it's on there and then just close it up. So there you have it. So that is both the assembly of our new Stampin' Up! purse die and the not acrylic distress technique. So thanks for stopping by and come back and visit us again at www.stampacademy.com.